and welcome to Magra Thea Builder of Worlds. This is going to be a commission build for burrows and badgers. Yep, we're back in the world of burrows and badgers, my favourite of all tabletop war games at the moment. Uh, the one I've had the most fun out of in, in for years and years, and the one that I've made the most scenery for in a very long time as well. So if you are new to my videos, uh, then this is a great place to start. It's going to be a really interesting series of videos because I've got quite a big project to get my teeth into. If you are interested in burrows and badgers, there are a number of things that you can do. Um, that is, if you've never heard of the game before. If you haven't heard of the game before, I can't entirely blame you um, because it's... Kind of like we like to keep it fairly niche to start off with. Um, uh, Burrows and Badgers was written by a guy called Michael Lovejoy, and it's him and his good lady Joe who are oath sworn miniatures. Michael wrote the rules, he designs the figures, Joe paints the figures, she makes scenery, they work together, it's awesome. Um, and Burrows and Badgers is an extremely friendly community and a brilliant fun game to play. Uh, needless to say, the models are absolutely gorgeous too. Um, it's totally grabbed me by. Uh, the imagination in the last couple of years and I've thoroughly enjoyed it, made loads of scenery for it and now I'm making scenery for other people too. So this uh, um, video is going to be about a, a build that I'm making for Black Dragon Miniatures in Hinkley in Leicestershire uh, and this is going to be a large build. You may have already seen a commission build I did for Gary at Black Dragon which is Stoke Bart's Haulage Yard. Um, if you haven't go and check it out where have you been what have you been doing uh if you click subscribe uh then you come up you'll be able to find all the other things that i've done there's a burrows and badgers playlist for, for a start you can go and check out some of my other scenery but you might have seen um stoke bart's haulage yard and um the interesting thing about that was that kind of like spurred on then a conversation about other models that we can make to go along with that and we have got kind of like in the pipeline plans to make a pub um, and a couple of dwellings shop type things all in a similar style um, but then not only did Gary get into Burris and Badgers big time and I think he's now got the entire figure range he's painting most of them as well um, and it's kind of my fault not only did he get into that he also discovered the uh, Red Wall stories by Brian Jacks um, and although B and B isn't Red Wall, there are many, many similarities. And he did kind of like message me and say, "Would it be possible to make Red Wall build an abbey?" Um, and I was like, uh, "Yeah, I suppose." I mean, one of the things about the models that I make is they are designed to come about and be interactive. And the problem with a lot of these games is that um, uh, the scenery ends up just being something you kind of move your figures around. Um, uh, and uh, the conversation that I had with Gary was very much about the fact that we want this piece of scenery, which is going to be three feet by two feet in the end, to um, be potentially the whole table. So you have no choice but to play inside the scenery. What we need to do really is have a look at uh, the planning process, first of all. I've had a number of people actually ask me, could I talk about kind of commissions and how I do it and that kind of thing. Um, and first of all, I'm not a huge commission builder. I've, I've built stuff for other people and I like building commissions for things. I've got, got a few problems with building commissions for people. And more than anything else, is I totally get into what I'm doing. I love what I do. Um, and then it kind of like almost breaks my heart to give them away. This channel, mind you, has changed that a little bit because now I can have a lot of fun making models uh, and then I can uh, give them to somebody else and they have to store them, <laughs> which is pretty cool. I'm also pretty sure that when we get around to doing some Burrows and Badgers events when COVID has gone away, I'll get to use some of this scenery and play on it anyway, so I won't be missing out too much. So that's one of the main reasons why I don't do masses of, of commissions. Um, but it is something that I, I do enjoy doing from time to time. The chatting with somebody else, the coming up with a plan, um, going backwards and forwards, and then sorting out what it's all going to end up being like uh, is, is pretty good fun. My other problem with doing things for a commission, to be quite honest, is the fact that I never know how much somebody should charge for commissions. Um, especially the way I go about making models because it's about love and enjoyment and the amount of time I put into it. And there are guys out there who do make a living, I believe, out of making commissions. I know of a couple of different people. Um, 
but it's it's a difficult thing. I don't know how many people are out there who constantly want to be buying war game scenery. And to be quite honest, I don't want to be making tons and tons and tons of it. I've got a proper job, a company of my own that I want to run anyway. So from that point of view, um, I don't mind doing the odd thing and projects like this are really cool. So I'm never going to be one for doing loads of commissioned scenery. They've got to be um, interesting, different, unique and that kind of thing. But having said that, if you fancy a Magathia Builder of Worlds piece of scenery, then all you got to do is uh, give me a shout on the community section uh, of my channel or come and find me on Facebook uh, at Magathia Models and have a chat. You never know, I might be up for it. Right, what we need to do is go over to my new office over the other side of the garden and I'll show you the plans and the drawings and things uh, and give you an idea of what this model is going to look like. Come with me. You've got to get up. You've got to leave. You've got to go out of here, leave the workshop, Go into another room. Simple. Come on. Let's go. Okay, here we are. This is the Time Capsule Education Office. Uh, what have we got in here? Apart from anything else, you can see the Sump Fortress is sat over there because I haven't found anywhere to put it yet. Um, everybody meet Maud. Maud is my uh, office help. She's my assistant. She's not very good at typing because she's only got hooks for hands. and um, Yeah, she hasn't got any eyes either. Check this out, look. There's Maud there. Maud. My name is Maud. How may I help you? She can't work the coffee machine either, but, you know, uh, she's my office help. <laughs> if you want to know about Maud, you're going to have to ask. Right, this used to be where I kept all my um, scenery and all our cosplay gear, but um, we've had a change around. Big moves. It's been really cool. All my work stuff has now moved to a different location. All the... Uh, scenery and the cosplay gear has been moved into uh, a different location, storage location as well and all of a sudden i've got loads more space so i've got plenty more opportunities to make more scenery which is really cool but the scenery that i'm going to be making in this series of videos is not for me anyway in the long run i'm not going to have to worry about keeping them and looking after them which is really pretty cool um they are to be found in my commissions book and uh, what we need to do is come down here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. The first thing that I do when I uh, um, start talking about a commission is I go looking for ideas. Uh, the client had asked me to, could I make Redwall Abbey? Um, now Redwall appears in a number of different things. It appears in novels and it appears in uh, TV, in cartoons. Um, and loads of people had a go at uh, making it one way or another. I mean, blimey, there are Minecraft versions and all sorts of things. Um, now, when we look at something like this, that this is Red Wall Abbey. Let's have a look at that, that one there. If we have a look at this, it's not a very big picture, but it's huge. And we want this to fit on a table. We want it to be a Burroughs and Badgers game. So I kind of like thought, well, you know, really, um, three foot by two foot is going to be about as big as we're going to get. That'll be manageable. Um, but there are loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of images if you Google image search Redwall Abbey. Um, so from that point of view, I had plenty that I could be getting on with and playing. So my next stop then is to start to think about it, chat with the client a bit more and uh, do some drawing. And the first drawing that I did, the drawings I normally do are kind of like top-down plan things and then the odd elevation, just to give me an idea of what we're looking at. And believe it or not, that was the first drawing I did. Now, yeah, you know, it doesn't actually give you an enormous idea of what I'm doing, what I'm aiming for. But uh, actually, there's enough there to be getting on with for me to be working with. So we've got three one foot wide by two foot long sections and the idea is that this model is going to split into several bits so this was the first sketch that i did um which i sent to the client you know going look this is what i've got in mind and then i had to obviously explain what on earth was going on because that's just a bunch of black lines on some graph paper i then started to draw the abbey actually itself so it made sense with the three one foot by two foot sections they're still only rough drawings but certainly enough to give us an idea of what we are talking about. There are multiple buildings then, as you can see. Um, and what we'll do is we'll have a look at a better quality uh, floor plans, and then we'll come back to these pictures and illustrations. Buildings are about the only thing I can actually draw, so you know. It's, uh... 
the plan then is to have uh, the model split into three bits, three two foot by one foot sections. This is the central section uh, and essentially is going to be one large building, the main abbey building itself. Um, it's going to be raised up. It's going to have stairs up into the front of it. It's going to be one large rectangular building with a little kind of alcove chapel bit at the end. Steps down out of either side. And this kind of like square here, which we can just about see drawn in dotted lines, is showing a tower that's going to be on the roof. The front outside then area is going to be a courtyard, which is going to be walled up three sides. Um, the whole idea with this is the fact that this model alone which is this bit here. It could be an entirely freestanding piece, could be made before the others and used straight away. So that whole model will be uh, a model in its own right, usable straight away on the table, or for smaller scenarios, can be picked up, taken out, uh, and used by itself. Thus giving uh, the uh, organizer of the game, the scenario writer, the owner, um, loads of flexibility with the model. The roof is going to lift off, the tower will come apart so you can get access inside because it's a big old space to not have uh, access to. So this will all have be able to get into. Um, I haven't put loads of detail in here. There will be a, pure, uh, uh, a pulpit and a few other bits and pieces, but I'm not fully detailing it inside if the owner wants to uh, put in kind of like benches and all sorts of other bits and pieces, pews, then that's entirely going to be up to him. Uh, but I'm going to keep it mostly open so we can have fights inside. I might have a couple of kind of tall columns, I think, in some ways that will support the tower or will provide kind of like breaking up line of sight, that kind of thing. That might be quite cool. So that is the, the initial plan. And then I've got two bits that go on the outside now the idea here is then that we've got one another foot by two foot board section that runs alongside it one going on this side and one going on the other side now the problem with this is the fact that uh actually you're gonna have difficulty seeing this because the light and the way it's drawn but essentially what we got two separate bits let's have a look at those in detail this first piece then is this top section here and we're going to have a series of monk cells along the side with a kind of cloistered walkway, a refectory, a large dining room with a covered walkway that comes up to the edge here and a kitchen with a well in a backyard over here. Now uh, the idea is, is that I'm also going to make a separate wall piece that will fit in along here and that can be taken out. So this, again, could be used as a two foot by one foot scenery piece in its own right. To butt it up against the side of the uh, abbey, you can just take out the removable walls and what we'll then get is we'll have... The refectory going through a walkway straight into the abbey here. We've got a, a vegetable garden on this side of the wall and the monk cells and the kitchen and that kind of thing. Um, and then on the other side, again, we've got the abbot's house, a cloister and some kind of tower, more accommodation, that kind of thing. Again, um, over the other side, well, I'm going to have a removable wall. So this, again, could be a two foot by one foot scenery piece all by itself. Um, that way there, we've got, again, maximum versatility for the use of the model. And the other kind of thing, kind of thing is the way I've planned it is we could take the Abbey out to be one thing and put these two things together and we still get some kind of, well, this would now be a two foot by two foot um scenery piece which again has got um a vegetable garden a formal garden cloisters tower abbot's house and all these other bits and pieces that could be used uh in a different way especially if i'm cunning and don't put lots of uh ecclesiastical symbols on it could be used for almost anything else 
Um, what this doesn't have, mind you, is a big impressive entrance way in. There will be a number of gateways into it, but um, nothing as big and as grand as a four foot wide gate to get into for the uh, uh, main abbey. But there will be a gateway probably down here, down next to this tower. That's what that tower then is doing. So this is a very, very ambitious build, I think. Um, it's going to require quite a lot of work. My main build is going to be done with XPS foam um, in different thicknesses. So the abbey walls are probably going to be, uh, most things will be probably half an inch thick. I'd like to go a, a, an inch thick for the abbey walls, but that's probably overdoing it and we'll lose too much space inside. Um, but then uh, we'll also be using foam core and balsa wood for detail and that kind of thing too. So there we'll also go with small details. It's going to be made pretty heavy duty. It's going to be made on nine millimeter thick plywood as a base, um, like stoke barts. Uh, the thing about the plywood like that means that it's going to be quite solid, raised up a little. The, it will be finished so that uh, it's just a step up in many ways. But that way, the, the, uh, it's going to be used in a shop. It's going to be stored and handled roughly. I want the base of the model to be pretty robust. Uh, and so it will survive a goodly amount of time. That is the plan. So best we get on with drawing some of this and starting to make this model the rest of this video then is going to be planning out and uh, starting the construction of the abbey itself and we'll see how far we go with that i'm going to be working with half inch thick um, xps foam in the most and we'll see how far we can go okay so that's the design settled on we've drawn it out we've agreed it with the client we've got a good idea what it's going to look like what with floor plans and with some fairly loose and open to interpretation sketches of what we're looking at. So we now need to get on with this build. Um, before we start, let's have a quick look at some of the materials we're going to be using. This is uh, nine millimeter plywood. I've had cut at my local B&Q. Um, if you're watching this anywhere else around the world, B&Q are uh, a local hardware suppliers. Um, they will normally cut a uh, board to the size that you want it. So this has been cut to one foot by two foot rectangles. You have to be so careful when buying board, of course, because um, even stuff from shops like that, brand new, it tend to warp the way they keep it stored. I had a whole bunch of boards cut at the same time. Some of them are really bendy and they are now stuck uh, underneath wooden chests of 18th century and 16th century pirate and soldiers kit in my garage flatten them out and keep them stored flat making sure they stay flat these are the three flattest boards that i've got out of those and they're going to go together to make the three bases for this build nine mils is quite a step up from a tabletop um, but I'm going with this because I want this to be uh, rugged. I want the bases to stand up to a lot of moving around. I know these are going to be get used in uh, an independent gaming store. Uh, and sometimes they are. it will be better for the model if they've got this good solid base. If they get used on a separate battlefield, I'm going to make sure the edges of the bases are done so it looks like stonework. Um, just even from a paint job point of view. So actually it's a step up from the earth onto the abbey model um the other aim is to also use this actually as a whole gaming board in its own right so from that point of view it won't matter too much right moving on then the model material that i'm going to use most of all to make this model is xps foam high density polystyrene comes in all sorts of thicknesses this is 25 millimeter or one inch thick stuff uh, and this pink stuff is 10 mil thick now i've experimented with a number of these different kinds of uh, polystyrene you can get some soft to sold as kind of like underfloor insulation um and you have to be careful because some of it is a bit soggy if you've seen my um sump wall builds for necromunda i wasn't happy with that foam it wasn't it was it was kind of soft to touch this stuff is really pretty tough stuff uh, you can carve into this much better than the, the other stuff i've used um 
Where do you get it from? I tend to buy this online, certainly have done during lockdown. Um, it's not the kind of stuff, this high density stuff, is not the kind of stuff that UK main, well, we can't really call them high street anymore because they aren't, but, um, you know, retail park retailers, Wix, Homebase, B&Q, they totally don't stock this stuff, right? You have to go to online suppliers. And much as I hate to admit it, I use Amazon. Um, this is a delivery I've just had this week two uh what's that 60 centimeters by 120 centimeter sheets of this stuff seven pound 50 a sheet so it's actually pretty good value um and i'm using more and more of this in models now and not quite so much foam core purely because i can put the texture onto this straight away with foam core which i love building in um i then have to texture on top of that Whereas the polystyrene is going to offer me that texture. Um, this grey stuff actually is, is really, really tough. This, the the uh, pinky purpley stuff, it used to only be coming pink or blue. It tends not to these days. Um, this is, a, I'm going to work on this. I'm going to texture it because I want it to be kind of like rock and that kind of thing. So we'll have a look at that. But this is the main material I'm going to use. Uh, I'm going to cut to size. And my original plan had been to make... Um, one bit at a time. I'm still going to start with the Abbey, but I am actually going to make all three boards uh, simultaneously because um, I've got so many arms. No, I'm going to do them obviously one at a time, but I'm going to do them all at the same time. And my plan is going to be to take my floor plans, like this, this is the central one for the Abbey. I'm going to transfer these, draw them the right scale to fit on these boards uh, with a pencil and then go over them with a sharpie. Um, apart from anything else, this is still very much a, an estimation when I'm actually using the materials, um, it will be a, a better fit on the board. I'm gonna be making most of the walls of this out of the 10 mil stuff. Um, gonna be using 25 mil stuff for some of the outside wall details and bits and pieces and possibly the floor and the abbey as well. Um, so I'm gonna draw onto the boards first of all get all my layouts done correctly and then i'm going to build draw onto the uh pink styrene uh and i'm going to texture it all and then going to cut it out and dry fit it all together using toothpicks cocktail sticks uh to make sure it all fits before i start sticking painting and doing loads of other detail like adding windows and bits and pieces so i'm going to make blank high density polystyrene boxes essentially uh, on these uh, boards without sticking anything down. So I'm happy with how it all goes together. And so I've got a good idea of what it looks like before I move on to the next stage. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna start drawing on the wood from uh, the plans that I've got and hopefully make it all fit. Wish me luck. Come back to see me in a bit. Bah! So when making models like this, I always like to make sure I've got figures from the right range around about. Many of you will know Ubiquitous Orlock, whose main job in the Necromunda builds is to make sure I've got scale right. In this case here, I've got a bunch of B&B &B figures, gorgeous B&B &B figures, uh, just out to um, uh, make sure that everything's going to feel right. This is going to be a big build. Check it out. I mean, this is these guys are massive. The Badger and the uh, Red Kite here are massive. B and B characters, um, and they are going to be, yeah. This is going to be large. I'm going to make sure that the inside of this building is big enough for the massive characters to get around. Although the side doors will be a bit of a tight squeeze because they are two inches wide. But that's that's the kind of plan. And oh look, spoilers! I'm going to have columns going down here. Um, they're going to hold up part of the roof. Please note that all of Tim's B and B figures are completely painted. I do have the entire range of Burrows and Badgers figures and a whole bunch of figures from other companies as well. And it's the only set of figures I've ever had that I've completely painted. Smug mode engaged. Okay, so that's the whole complex laid out, drawn out. This is going to be quite a mammoth task. Um, but this has been a really helpful exercise because it helps me plan out everything it's a really good idea how it's all going to fit and also what size bits of styrene I'm going to need to start cutting 
this is mostly accurate it has also of course um going to show that you just can't trust things that come from uh wood supplies and the like because what's supposed to be a two foot wide board isn't it? it's just under two foot wide which is really really frustrating because metric um so it's just under but it's close enough and i'll be able to adjust measurements to make that work i want everything to line up so very quickly then in the middle here we're going to have the main abbey building um that's going to have columns inside it and a, a cool roof with a square tower on the top uh, uh with steps down so it's going to be an inch off the ground steps down into a yard out here with a wall section with three gateways then over on this side we've got wall sections at the back um and this is all completely empty along here i'm going to make a freestanding wall that could go in here so that could this whole piece could be a standalone um scenery piece and then we're going to have a kitchen over here there's going to be a well in the middle of this yard here this is the refectory where uh the uh, folk come to eat and then there's a set of monks cells down here i suppose and this is going to be um a garden area vegetable garden kind of thing walled around the outside where it isn't building and then over this side we're going to have the abbot's house uh, we're going to have well, we've got a tower down here the wall section here what i haven't drawn on is also a cloister that's going to go around here um and this will be a formal garden with a fountain in it so the idea being that the uh people who live here can actually walk from one end from the uh refectory under a covered walkway through the abbey itself out the other side all the way around to this tower and then of course the idea is that i could take that piece out put these two together and they will make a perfectly good two foot by two foot piece of scenery with garden here formal garden over here um, and I have walls that take out and both of these pieces of scenery will have a standalone wall section that will go in here uh, that can be dropped in to uh, um, make these really really flexible pieces of scenery so now I've got to get on with drawing out working out the walls and doing the most tedious parts of this job which are the texturing of the uh xps foam and then the scribing of the stonework the only good thing about this is this is a big building um big medieval buildings tend to have big stonework so hopefully it won't take too long to do all the stonework but it's going to take some time of sitting in front of the telly just drawing stones into polystyrene yay so this is a 10 millimeter xps foam drawn with the two gable ends of the abbey main abbey building this is tinfoil now if you've seen me work with xps foam you know what's coming up if you haven't this is what's coming up take tin foil roll it into a ball now the thing about this xps foam is pretty tough but it's also extremely smooth um, I haven't put any details on here yet. There will be windows going into this um, and a doorway at one end and a big chunk is going to be cut out of this because it's going to have a... Um, but, and then brickwork, stonework's got to be put on it too. So there's a lot to do to this, but um, before I work out any of that, I'm going to texture this so it when it paints, it looks more kind of rocky. And I'm doing that by making my taking a ball of tinfoil and then literally just rolling it across the whole surface of this polystyrene. I've learned to do this before I cut anything out. It's just a lot easier doing it on large surfaces. Um, you can probably see, we'll have a look. Okay, so that's one side completely done. I've even done the bits that are gonna be cut out and not part of this gable end, because I might end up using these for other bits that I can cut out and then it's just ready textured. It's a lot easier just to roll over the whole thing. Um, so I'm gonna flick it over onto this smooth side. Do that all again. Go. Try to keep my ball rolling in lots of different directions. Keep it as a ball 
keep my patterns, it makes it regular. I tell you what, there's only so much of this you're going to want to watch, to be quite honest, because I've got a hell of a lot of walls to make. Right. Okay, so, quick. Starring update. Uh, we have drawn... I've textured the two gable ends. I've drawn in here where the doorway, main doorway is going to be going into that. And I'm going to be putting windows on here, but I'm 3D printing the windows at the moment, so I'm not guessing there. When I've got windows printed, I'm going to lay them on. This end, uh, I've drawn in uh, a mini gable because this is going to be cut out. Uh, this is going to have a rose window put in it. And again, I haven't put that on there because I haven't printed it out yet. These are the side walls of the church, of the abbey. So, at this stage now, we're at the point where we have a side wall, which is going to need windows, and one on this side as well. We've got the gables with the doorways. This small piece of XPS foam is going to make these two walls here, six inches tall, which is the same as the gable there. And now I'm working on grey polystyrene, one inch thick. This is the floor of the abbey. So we're gonna to have to have stairs up to that. These are cut out for the two doorways and have stairs down on both sides. So the walls are all gonna fix around this. Um, I'm gonna cut the, uh, I will scribe on here, the flagstones of the abbey of the floor um, and probably put in somewhere a way down to a crypt. Although we're not building a crypt for this model in the future, I uh, very much had it in mind that it will be possible uh, to lift up this whole model onto a two or three inch riser with a crypt and some tunnels underneath. But that would be another project. But we would need a way into the crypt. So apart from anything else, um, inside the abbey itself, possibly over here, over here, I might have some kind of way cut in that we can go down the stairs into the crypt or maybe yeah behind the the altar in front of the window there'll be an entrance or something like that um and then i'm cutting out one inch square sections which are going to make going to be three inches tall and are going to make the pillars on the wall uh, around the outside of the enclosure out the front so that's what we're doing next and then i've got to cut 10 millimeter wall sections to fill these bits and pieces in here. And then I'm gonna test fit it by fixing it all together with uh, cocktail sticks or toothpicks if you're in across the pond um, to give him a shape and make sure it all fits. And then I'm gonna build, do exactly the same with the other two sections. So by the end of this week, I will have the whole thing in uh, cut out, no windows necessarily cut out, but all the shapes for all three bits of the board um ready to assemble that's the plan anyway let's see how it goes okay so i'm not a massive user of 3d printing in my scenery uh, it's mostly because i don't play Star Wars legion where there's just tons and tons of it you can print and there are things that i want to print um but i love the charm of own built and scratch built stuff but on the other hand making this on a 3D printer makes absolute sense. That's a seven meter tall window to go into the abbey and can reproduce loads of those for hardly anything at all. Oh, it's really great. And then I can also do this kind of thing as well. This print in here is a rose window to go in the back wall of the abbey. And that's just absolutely epic. There's no way I could achieve that. I'd have to buy that otherwise. It's going to take about four hours to print and it's going to cost pent. So that's really wicked. So this is my 3D printer set up. Um, I'm running two Ender 3s. And um, I'm printing windows at the moment for the Abbey. Down here, we're printing more of those individual churchy type windows on the left-hand machine. And on this right-hand machine, we're printing that rose window. I also run an anti-cubic Photon 3 resin printer as well for uh, small details and figures and bits and pieces. I've got to confess, I haven't done enough with that um, and I need to learn more about uh, the layers you print in that kind of thing to get finer detail models. But um, These two guys are racking away, printing out in PLA. Um, and I'm going to have some really smashing windows 
for this model. Um, part of it is that I'm waiting for the windows to be printed so I can work out where they're going to sit in the walls. So before I go too far into cutting things up, I'm making sure that all the surfaces are textured. Still using the tin foil rollers. Um, it helps to compact the styrene a little bit more. It takes the kind of regular shape out of everything. It wears off the corners quite nicely. So they'll look a little bit more worn and weathered. So that's a roughly inch square these are going to cut into three inch bits and give me some bits left over but anyway, can't do anything about that so that's a weathered one compared to one that isn't you see the difference there it doesn't look a lot a massive difference but actually when it comes to painting the texture on that when i've drawn in bricks brickwork on that that'll be really cool um and it's easier to do it as larger pieces than it is smaller so let's keep going Okay, so this is every piece of XPS foam that I've cut out to make the central board, the Abbey. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dry fit it. At the moment, you can see none of it has got any stonework drawn into it. I haven't cut out any windows at all. All I want to do is make sure that the model's going to go together properly. So I'm going to dry fit it all and uh, see if it fits on. Then I've finally finished printing a whole bunch of 3D printed windows that are going to go into this. So I'm going to take the next step will be then after I've tried it all out and fitted it all together will be to take it apart again and work out where the windows are going to go on the model, cut out or draw on the uh, um, holes where the windows are going to go. You can see I've drawn on where I'm going to put a great big door in the front. Um, and then I'm going to draw in all the stonework onto all that XPS foam. On the outside of the model, on the inside of the model, I'm going with this texture that I've created with my polystyrene. That's gonna give me the finished kind of like lime rendered whitewashed wall on the inside of the chapel. By right, it should have full on paintings all over it, but I'm trying to keep this kind of like non-religion specific. Uh, I am even want uh, Gary to have the opportunity, the ability to use this in other games if he wants. Um, you know, so maybe for bolt action or something else. So I'm trying to keep it kind of like fairly free of anything that, you know, would specify that it belongs to one thing or another. So I'm not going to do that. The inside of the model will just be kind of like whitewashed as if the Reformation had turned up and made it all dull. Thank you, Edward VI. So that's what we're going to do. The next thing we're going to do then is peg it all together. I'm going to use cocktail sticks or if you're on the other side of the pond to me you probably call these toothpicks but uh, i'm going to cut them in half and pin everything together with these uh because apart from anything else i should be able to lose the holes when i uh paint it all and stick it together and assemble it so uh, let's give it a go see what happens okay so here we are all pegged together you can see the main structure is just big xps box um but there are columns inside they're going to be holding up the tower that's going to come up for the roof. Uh, that end is going to be an altar. There's going to be a, a rose window in there. I'm going to have got to cut in the doorway just here and one on the other side because they're going to match and go right through. And then going to have at least one, maybe two or even four windows, probably just one on each side. Um, a window on each side of the door. Got to cut the door in. And there's the front yard out there with the walls. Pretty substantial walls. Um, but um, yeah that's cool so the walls are going to be the gateways on either side are two inches wide so a massive beast can get through um, and I could make gates or whichever go in there but I quite like them being open so that's, that's it so that's the model thus far um, there's the floor there so I'm going to have to cut, decide exactly where the um, pillars are going to be and then carve in, uh, scribe in the uh, flagstones into the floor of the building and then work out where all the windows are going to go and then 
draw those on and then draw on scribe on all the stonework on the outside fortunately it's quite a big building and big buildings come get made with big lumps of stone so from that point of view it's not shouldn't take too long he laughs ha 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 uh to actually put the stonework in then we're going to do it again for the other two board sections all right sticking this bad boy together then you can see the windows going in uh the floors in there's a tomb there just for scale size haven't stuck the rose window in the back because that's got to have some stuff done to it first that'll be painted and finished before that gets stuck in but all of these arch windows are gluing in now because they're not probably not going to be glazed so that's the main thing it's been held together with toothpick cocktail stick pegs are being held in place there's the odd gap that oh, I'll have to take some filler to just to fill in the corners there and over here but on the whole I'm really quite pleased with the fit of this model um, the stairwells and doorways are cut like that so doors could open up and I could have stairs and bits and pieces in there um, so I've got to put stairs down here and over here and then we've still got to add everything out the front um, and then the next section currently looks like that. Uh, so there's a bit of work to do on part two. Still a load more brickwork to draw and stuff, but it's coming on. And I'm still on schedule, I think, to get a video out for the weekend. Okay, so this is now stage one of the central piece of the Abbey done. There's still a lot of work to do to this, but now the outside wall is on. All the walls are up. The arch windows are all stuck in. Some are going to need some filling around the edges. The rose window at the back is not stuck in. And that's only half of it anyway. We've got to put stone paving down in the front yard. We've got to add columns. are going to go in here to support the roof. And because this is going to have... Um, a tower going up through the roof sticking out the top this is um, these are cake decorating columns they'll work out exactly where they're going to be essentially I want to have them supporting a tower <laughs> I've also got to work out how the hell to get out there um, but that's going to come up through the roof so it's going to be quite a big individual model this one regardless and then uh, obviously there's that one which is nearly ready to assemble and the other one I've hardly started yet. Uh, the, the printer's busy working away. They're not on, win on windows at the moment today. They are printing rivet heads. So our big 3D, big full scale uh, interior design job we've got going on in the next couple of weeks. That's a different video though. Watch this space. Right, there you go then. This is... As far as we've got this week there's been a lot of build going on this is a very very big model and quite time consuming when i've got other things to do as well this isn't either all of it mind you um this is the one that's most complete i've also done this this week which is board two the kitchen and refectory and the monk cells that's mostly done board three still looks like this I just run out of time. This video hasn't got any uh, of the board to build in it, really. Um, I like to keep my videos to about 45 minutes, uh, you know, no more than 45 minutes. And this is by putting in that second board stuff, that's going to take it well over the top. So uh, the next video will have board two and board three being built on it. And if time allows, get it into the detailing of the roof and various other bits and pieces on this as well. And uh, I'll feature in that one, Things like cutting in the windows into the stone and that kind of thing, because that hasn't been included in this video. This, I think, is probably going to be a three video project. Um, there'll be another one next week. Um, and then there might be a break for a week or so while I get some other stuff in. Uh, and then we'll come back to this because there's going to be a lot of time involved in the last part of this whole build. The, the detailing and the painting, that kind of thing. That isn't necessarily going to get done in one week. So. Thank you very much for watching this video today. Make sure that you subscribe 
uh, to Magathia Builder World because um, otherwise you're going to miss the rest of this build. If you this is the first time you've come across Burrows and Badgers, go back and check out some of my other B and B builds. There are other things on. Uh, there's a B and B playlist that you can check out. Um, do bear in mind, of course, that you know you don't have to be a Burrows and Badgers player to use a model like this. I reckon this would work perfectly well for bolt action um, and lots of World War Two stuff. And then um, other kind of fantasy based games as well. So from that point of view, um, it's going to be a really versatile model, I hope, and get a lot of use as we go forward. So make sure you subscribe. Please do leave comments down below of uh, the build, uh, what you think of it, um, with improvements I can make, other features that could go into it. Um, or if you've got questions you want to ask about materials or where I'm going next with it, then chuck them down there as well. Um, otherwise, I'll see you next time on Magathea Builder Worlds. Thanks for watching.